suppose the tennis racket one, I think you're talking about. Yeah. But it swings her 1,000 gram racket with a speed of 10 meters per second. She hits a 60 gram tennis ball that was approaching her at a speed of 15 meters per second. Ball rebounds at 39 meters per second. How fast is the racket moving immediately after the impact? Ignore the interaction of the racket with her hand for the brief duration of the collision. So, how heavy is your racket? 1,000 grams? Yeah, 1,000 gram racket with a speed of 10 meters per second. And then a 60 gram tennis ball. So, what, 60 grams being kilograms? Um, 0 0.06. On 15 meters a second. Yeah. Okay. Ball rebounds. After. Ball's going this way. Still 6 kilograms. Or er, 0.6, 0 0.06 kilograms. That rebounds 39 meters per second. And how fast is her tennis racket going? Um, let's see. First of all, which direction do you think it's moving? Her tennis racket? Yeah. It's going that way. It yeah. works the ball. It's probably still, you know, usually if you're playing tennis and you smack a ball, you don't bounce off of it. So you should probably still got a follow through going on. So there's some velocity here that we're trying to find. Alright. So what are we gonna do? Well we gotta find momentum first. Okay. Momentum up. I guess that some momentum of the tennis racket. Yeah. So this is one point. Six times thirty nine. Cool. Okay. What do we know about these two? What do we mean? They have they're equal. Right. So this is ten minus point oh six times fifteen. So it's that. Zero six times thirty nine. That's what you did. Oh no. Yeah, so this would be two point three point. Oh. Okay. So then you subtract that. That makes sense. She hits the ball, all the ball goes flying off, and it slows down her rack a little bit. If 
the tennis ball and racket are under contact for eight meters per second. What is the average force that the racket exerts on the ball? It's actually they're in contact for eight milliseconds, right? Oh, no. So delta T would be eight milliseconds, which is point zero zero eight seconds. So a millisecond is just a thousandth of a second. That makes sense at first, I just thought they forgot that. Okay, so what is the average force that the racket exerts on the ball? So what was the equation we have that has an average mass, force? Mass times acceleration. So there's that one. How would we be able to find the acceleration though? Do like do the is it the V buff final equals right? Unfortunately, we don't know the distance that they're in contact with each other. All right. So this one won't work. But there's one that uses specifically force average. Oh yeah. It's from this section. It's force average times delta time. That's the equation for intervals. And impulse is also equal to change in momentum of one of the objects. So, which object do we want to look at? Change of the object. Um. If you look at the ball, we could find its change in momentum. So what was the ball's um, initial momentum? Initial was uh, 0.06 kilograms times 39. That would be the final. Okay. So we, we can do that. Oh, 15. And then it was moving to the left. Uh, so negative. So make it negative. And then its final was 0 0.06 times 39. So if you want to find the change in momentum, <coughs> you do the final minus the initial, right? Right. So that would be 0 0.06 times 39 minus 0 0.06 times 15. And you just so you just put the the negative in the effect as it all like oh sorry so this is negative so it's minus and mi at minus so we'll make it plus positive. yeah yeah that's important because the momentum changed from going this way to all the impulse canceled out all of that momentum and then sent it back the other way so that's important. It's 3.24. So the chain is 3.24. Um, okay, so that is equal to J, which is equal to this. So now we have 3.24 was our change in momentum. That equals the average force times the change in time. So what was our change in time? How long were they in contact? Uh, 0 0.008 seconds. <coughs> Thank you.